Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pest and Lawn JJ. And this is What's Wrong With My Lawn? <laughs> What's Wrong With My Lawn is a video series where I go out and diagnose people's lawns just like yours at home using my five step diagnostic approach of color, pattern, water saturation test, the debris test, and a pull test to tell us what is causation versus correlation. Then I give you the solutions to fixing the problems. And as usual, it always starts with the walkthrough. Let's go. Now there's always been something suspicious to the homeowner about the front yard because it stays green all year round. It's just kind of funky. Oh, I found the problem. It's uh, it's fake. <laughs> just kidding guys. Turf grass is way cool. Moving on to the backyard where the problem begins. We can see that uh, overall we've got quite a number of things going on. And in this instance, this can become very overwhelming. So I'd like to get a history on this lawn. All right, James, so I'm here to shine this turd with you, but uh, why don't you give us a little bit of a history on this? Like, when did you start on this project and kind of what, what have you done? Yeah, so two years ago, it was just a dirt canvas with a whole bunch of tears. So we did all the grading, okay. got this nice patch. And then we put the sod in two years ago, the sprinkler system. It hasn't really panned out. There's a lot of settling, a lot of dips and all right. dents. So. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at it, but what do you wanna do with the lawn ultimately? Like, what is our goal? Our goal is I built this to play sports on. I want it very level, no okay. ankle turner holes. And all uh, right. So yeah, level and, and a nice right. spongy well, feel for bare feet. So we're not looking for just like an easy weekly maintenance thing. Like you want something kind of sports fieldy. Is that what I'm Yeah, this, is, this has to be my pride and joy. Reflect how I'm feeling on the inside. All right, man. Outside, well, so. what if we put a timer on this 90 days? Yeah, I think well, we can do that. You put the work in? Yeah. All right, man. Well, let's get back to the diagnostic. Yeah. Step number one is pattern, and this would be classified as random patterns throughout the cut instead of uniform, meaning one solid issue. Now, step number two is color. You'll notice that we have patches of green. We've also got patches of brown slash yellow, and we've also got gray. Now, let me explain these issues to you. For instance, in this corner, we've got yellow. Yellow typically means we've got some sort of burning happening, meaning most likely fertilized about four weeks ago, hasn't had a sufficient amount of water, which means that we've got some burning going on. Then we've got the white areas. This color is usually associated with either fungus or tissue that has been dead a very long time. And the third color is brown, which is commonly associated with lack of water Super common for this time of the year, especially if we haven't turned the sprinklers on. Now, I think the frustrating part about these type of situations, we have to diagnose random patterns individually. And this is where a lot of you guys go wrong. You'll test one section of the lawn and not all the others and come to one single conclusion. We may have two or three different correlating or causation factors, and that's what we got to figure out. Step number three is our debris test. And the whole point of this test is to take a thatch rake to see how much debris has accumulated on top of the soil. Now, the problem with this happening is this. Grass blades like to grow out either in your clumping formation outward or they grow with rhizomes or stolons and regenerate. And the debris stops that process from happening. Then you get a bunch of pitted areas throughout your lawn. So here's the thing, the uh, debris test gets a solid uh, D plus. <laughs> you can see all of this was taken just from this small area right here. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, Jinja, he just laid the sod. And this is pretty common, can also be a part of the watering practices that you can see every single time that I did a slight debris test, it just pulls up more and more and more. Step number four is our water saturation test. This is probably one of my favorites and most important tests. It's gonna show us what type of soil that we have, how much thatch has actually accumulated, and it's also gonna show us how much water is physically sitting in the soil. So I really enjoy the soil probe test. This is gonna tell me exactly what's in the soil. Now his soil on the bottom end his soil has a lot of topsoil in it, which is no surprise because he brought a lot of things in it. Shockingly, the grass that he put in 
last season has pretty decent rooting. I'm at about four inches on the rooting. Roots pretty white, which tells me it's not super stressed, pretty happy. Now here's kind of the shocking part, right? Brand new sod. We've already got about a little under half an inch of thatch coming through here. Not a big deal, except for the fact that he's got some pretty hefty goals. Now, when it comes to the actual soil and water saturation, I'd like to see six to eight inches of water saturation, especially in clay or topsoil type situations. And we've literally got next to nothing. Uh, you can see it's crumbling. Here's the craziest part. It just rained. We got some rain yesterday, but obviously when you don't have a history of watering properly, this is what you're going to look at. But even the top layers don't have enough water to it. And this was from some of the plugs in the green areas. When we come to the yellow areas, here's my plug. <laughs> this is it. Solid inch, inch and a quarter is all we have. Now, the interesting aspect is no thatch problems. The thatch problems were kind of area isolated, but it was mostly in the green areas, which means it's possible overwatering scenario when it was putting the sod in. That is very, very common to have happen. Um, overwatering does cause some of these problems, but we're gonna have to talk to him about some of these watering practices. Step number five is a pull test, and the whole point of the pull test is to see if we've got some sort of turf destroying insect, like a grub or some sort of a sod webworm. Now the point of this test is to use our bear claws, not our crabby pinchers, to physically grab a clump of grass and pull up on it. Now you know it's positive if it actually pulls up and out. In this instance, we are negative on the pull test, no current signs of turf insects. However, I highly recommend that people do a pull test every single time they mow. All right, James, so I'm pretty sure I've pieced this all together. Uh, it was kind of interesting because we went through color, pattern, water saturation, debris test. Now, obviously, through the walkthrough, you have a ton of undulations. Not shocking considering you basically just scraped everything, got it here. I take it you didn't have like a massive roller for compaction. No. Pretty simple. You also mentioned to me that you've been redoing the sprinklers, so we can see also some pitted areas due to that. Mm -hmm. um, however, here's where things got really interesting. We have the water saturation test, which tells us you actually have a significant amount of thatch only in the areas that are growing well, mm. which is kind of interesting, right? Because you wouldn't think it would be that way, especially with new sod. But I find people tend to overwater mm. in areas, which brings us on to the debris test. You have a ton of debris in this lawn. No way. Yeah, now understandably it's new, but there is a lot of debris in this mm. lawn. But I get people like you that don't believe me anyway, so let's All just right. go ahead and show you. I actually brought you a, a fun little toy today called the Allet Mower, and it actually has a dethatcher attachment on it. So we're just gonna run, run one little pass just to show you exactly what's going on in the lawn. All right. All right, James, we just ran it about uh, 12 feet. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Wide a bit of the thatch. <laughs> this is a lot, and, and here's the thing, it's just dead debris. Like 99% of this is just completely dead debris locking up the soil. So moving on to the pull test, checking for insects. It's really early on here in Utah. Didn't really expect to find anything. We didn't, so we're fine on that. But to pull it all together, causation, your sprinklers are just screwed, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, we need to figure out a better way for your sprinklers because the gray in the lawn suggests that we have a lot of dead debris. It's been that way. The circles in the pattern also suggest, and the funny thing is, is you've marked some of these sprinklers. Some of the sprinklers are literally dead center in the dead spot, which means the sprinklers are spraying up and over those areas. Mm. But because we have a history of poor sprinklers, we need to make sure that your coverage is just spot on. So we have a ton of undulations in the lawn or pitted areas. So the best thing that we can do is just to level the, the area out. Now, since you've already stacked in a ton of topsoil, it would be wise if we get a couple of yards of topsoil to fill in the areas that have two to three inches of depth in those areas. And then we're gonna aerate the entire thing 
and put sand over it. So this may not actually seem like that big of a deal, but we're still dealing with about two to three inches on pitting throughout the entire lawn. So having a nice two by four like this, or a four by four like this, kind of show you how bad the undulations are. It's always helpful because it'll give you a sign of reality. The reason why we're doing that, it's kind of like butter on toast. We're really just going to be smoothing everything out. Mm. It's also going to allow for a lot more oxygen and water saturation into the soil. And it's like sugar for this bluegrass. It's just going to pop. It's gonna give you everything that you want. But like I've told everybody out there, 90% of your success is going to be with proper watering. However, there are a few things that we need to address. You have some of these orangish areas in here. Mm. That is common for fertilizer burn. So we need to make sure, and causation isn't the fertilizer. I imagine you put the same amount of fertilizer over this yeah. whole thing, right? With a nice spreader. The fact of the matter is, is when you have lack of water in certain areas, it will cause this from happening, which again, checks one more box to causation being sprinklers. sprinklers. So once we can get the sprinklers all situated and all figured out, this thing's going to pop, but it's not gonna get you that lacrosse, soccer, football field kind mm. of feel. Yeah. And so that's again, going back to fixing all the divots in the lawn. We go back and we sand level this whole thing. So I'm excited, man. I give you 90 days. All right. We're, we're gonna get this done. In the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. We're slaying James's yeah. lawn.